ตั้งเจ็บนับสามล้านก็ตัวเดลิสเนี่ยช่วยตั้งนั่งกันทัดตั้งยังเป็นเซมเจ็บทำเจ็บล้านนั่นเมื่อปัญญาตาปะจบไ
Sosuke Semjena Pendate to Big Cham the Hing Jenda Wate, Sam Nashida, Jet to Edison at his Kalakabo Yoti. Ted Johnson tell a ten chick to Jondo, that's also like a Chebek Gabianade, Penson Robert Gabianade, that don't don't chat yan dog, Jonam Kari, Yenayam, Jig Sam Jula, Cham. Ninjiki, Pata, Matawa, and Dabochi, Mone, Tanichi, Ranging, Pena, Tachi, Shimmy, Gitawa, and Dabo, Takota, Ola, Mendabochi, Ranshuk, Net, Top and Dabochi, Yanni, Yandola, Tenda, which is so top by Yena, then I want a Taniki Chanchuk, Sam Yenaya, that's so so good, you like it to La. Pende in a ten ten so so good lunga ye some gay day to go the inchic, magic, chancho, somebody, mine by in a ten is some gen a pende day, mother singing the tawan in a yom mari. Young tabeg chum the hinge chick, cansa so good you like yo by in a young. Tet and saint yan to two some gay, sanjay the chancho, somebody, tom jay gay, took jet down, malam day. The land joke the yard and matto. Sos of Keru can nupa yona, yobanda water. Sos of Keru can nupa mena, mebanda water in the Tawan in the Ray or Marite in the Capsula, one at Taneke, Tate, Tabu, Tene, Tuki, Naya, Tikadak, Karchim body, Tate, Tabu, Tuki, Namaka, Gone, Tene, Semke, Tamke, La Pende, Lana, Mepa, Doctor Beg, Nubaki. Then Good morning, everyone. Please listen with the motivation of bodhicitta, which is the thought that all beings throughout the reaches of space must achieve perfect awakening, and that it is in order to bring that about that you will listen to and practice the profound and holy Dharma. As Dharma practitioners, we need unfluctuating awareness. Many of us uh, practice formally, and when we're in the shrine room, we practice with diligence. Provided that our formal practice is not interrupted or disturbed uh, by a frequent distraction, that is fine. But it is also not enough. Because a Dharma has to actually mix inseparably with the mind of the person who practices it. For example, in our cultivation of bodhicitta, it is unrealistic for us to hope that without cultivating it steadily, without reflecting upon it at every opportunity, that it's just going to grow or develop by itself within us so that suddenly we will discover a fountain of bodhicitta within our minds when we need it on the spot. Like anything else, bodhicitta is a skill that has to be developed and its cultivation requires the steady effort of increasing familiarization. Like any skill in this world, you cannot simply turn to it when you need it. You have to actually develop that skill for it to be available to you as a resource when it is needed. In the same way, Dharma has to be practiced and developed steadily, or it is uh, unlikely that it will actually have very much effect uh, on your mind. We need to practice Dharma while we are working, 
while we are going to sleep, while we are standing around or sitting around, while we're eating, while we're having a conversation. Especially our cultivation of bodhicitta has to be constant, like a low flame underneath the pot that will keep the, the contents of the pot a cooking for a long time. Anyone who develops true love and compassion and bodhicitta is not acting alone. Their aspirations, if they are genuine, coincide with and are held and developed in common with those of all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So therefore, when you develop bodhicitta, the benefit you bring to others does not depend solely on your own aspirations and your own abilities, but you add those to the ocean of the aspirations of all Buddhas. So please cultivate bodhicitta with that understanding and think that what I want is to bring all beings to a state of perfect happiness. That requires their liberation from samsara. In order that they be liberated from samsara, I must first achieve that same state of liberation and awakening myself. In order to do that, I will have to pass through all of the paths and stages which are part of the journey toward that. In order to be able to do that, I will listen to the teachings. Before we continue uh, from where we left off yesterday, I want to make a general remark about these songs. Um, and this is true uh, of the songs that we are studying this weekend, as well as of many of the songs we've studied in uh, previous weekends. Most of these uh, songs were written by Techen Bhava Dorje for the uh, specific use or benefit of disciples who had already uh, undergone a very uh, high level of Dharma training or practice. In terms of their previous experience and possible realization, even in terms of the amount of effort they had uh, put into purification and accumulation practices prior to the writing of the song, most of the people for whom these songs were written were um, very highly developed practitioners. As a consequence of that, most of the songs are written at a very a high level. 
the level of the view and meditation described in these, therefore, can seem very intimidating to us. It's just a little bit, it may seem unapproachable. To be honest, I sometimes doubt my ability to understand these songs. So I therefore assume that they, I'm not alone in this and that uh, they may seem a little bit uh, highfalutin for you too. Nevertheless, don't be intimidated by this. As advanced uh, or high as the uh, meaning of these songs may be, there is still tremendous blessing and merit uh, in hearing them. Ransom, Tembes and Antoine, Loy, Joe Damaji, and Sarcho, Stasonis, Tandela, that's him being all a dying with capsulas, that when a gum sinking the Jabbik capsulas at all, that would take what a semg nello, that would the che yola chamado a chene, tene can now to that anger sente Tene Homa Tombaram Bocheke Nendola Tene Kona Rum Digni Zinavak Kalam Nang Sung Kalam Nangari Stati to Gavsalang and the Pug Yame Janjari Tene Kongi Chun Darwan Dovang Emishi Ransom Chombon Nandovari Sangari Tomaram Shake Sanjig Sangari That Rumoti Kone Chasaman does send those things in the ten years. How we are. Then ジャンジョ then Sanjay Tembay, Sanjay K. Jumped in the get that in the song yard, gave a chin and Majakin to Papanum Sober, Jang Semi Yonsundo, then Sanjay Tembay, Sony, that in the chin, so te, Che Yola Trotting in there, Sam taken to be yardy, now that your Maric Palatin, a dandy gombo, shogun, a song, then it dart the dagger tower last of the dart, and yet the tower last of the covered nello. He also saw about Tom J. Day, that they took Palmic Nello Carinda, which it has shaggy on the day, also saw what day. Sam la shaddegi yardy, Sam with num dog zotegi yardy. Tay in the capsule around him, day. Tenny Cora Charanda, which is Chinkin, Mepa Zerne, Yola Patan Yawayena, Sem Tonyena, Tay in the castle, Sem Tela Charat Gogiori, Sem Tela Charate Gogiori Senna, Charate Yang, I your Marie Rang, Sem Tela Rang. ごとねたせんてのんどでかなんどんどんかれちゃけどにょもばぺなかんでじゅんどんげてきてたんぼじばしょうけわたてにげわしょうけわでめいじゅんどんこうねこんぺるとんどんねてんでちゅんねせんて
Chancho sembe ke gone, no sembe. Non bar topo ke kora. Ta nesro kare yimba te kora. Ta kora kansela ko ta zambo. Cham nyenge chancho ko semna chiobar chiobar tang. Sangha dorje tekbe ke lam. ตะนี้เตตําดมาเสียบะเจกะลือหลานะหะตะยิติงเงินละเนปาลาสะเปกะตะนี้หนาดาริตองกะรังกะตะนี้ซอนดาวะตินเดตาบะตะคานะเตน
Tibetan is a wonderful language for you, Murph. But we cannot match it. That <laughs> Continuing from where we left off, we now come to the song that's found on page 103. And uh, this is a, a short song of instruction on meditation. And the, the first line says, when your mind is caught by recollection, it is seen. A recollection here uh, means mindfulness. So the first point of the song is that the practice of meditation consists uh, fundamentally in all its forms of the cultivation of mindfulness or mindful awareness. So it might be helpful, Rimshe said, to start by talking about what meditation is not. Meditation is not pursuing external appearances. The practice of mindfulness means that you do not allow your mind to be uh, drawn outward, uh, seduced by appearances. So in order to cultivate mindfulness, you turn uh, your mind in on itself. Your mind looks at itself instead of at everything else. But you also do not uh, fixate on or grasp the mind as a self. So the things you are not doing in meditation are not uh, turning outward and uh, pursuing appearances, but turning inward. But even though you turn inward, you are not um, fixating on the mind, the mind that turns inward, the mind to which it turns inward uh, as a self. 
And that is the starting point of uh, things, is really the starting point of uh, meditation. Ramshay said, when I was uh, still quite young, and we were all rather, uh, well, he said badly behaved, w w wild young tulkus, His Holiness, the 16th Karmapa, had the uh, Lord of Refuge, Trungpa Rinpoche, come and give us a talk. And um, Trungpa Rinpoche said, um, I don't know, it's, it's not going to be in English, but uh, the Vinaya, you know, the monastic discipline. Vinaya means taming. So in Tibetan, the word for the Vinaya and the word for taming your mind are the same word. So he said, I don't know much about the Vinaya, but I know that the only taming that matters is taming the mind. Well, of course, we thought this was hilarious because his lifestyle was such that it was evident that he was not, at least at that point, too interested in So we made jokes about that. But and lots of them. The Vinaya for a, 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 a fully ordained uh, monk has 253 uh, rules in the Vinaya of the Mula Sarvastavadan school, which is our school of Vinaya. The Bodhisattva vow has many more rules than that. And the Vajrayana vow, or Samaya, is said to have a billion rules and regulations. So we have so many rules that we can't even remember them. But they all come down to one thing, which is taming your mind. And this is why the Buddha said, the Buddha's teaching is to fully tame your own mind. The stanza goes, do no wrong whatsoever, do a good in abundance, and fully tame your own mind. That is the Buddha's teaching. So what is it we're taming when we tame our mind? We're taming the mind's delusion. And our mind basically has a two types of delusion. One is our delusion about appearances. And we indulge and increase that delusion whenever we allow our mind to be drawn outward toward any appearance. Because we then fixate on the supposed reality and importance of that appearance. We have another type of delusion, which is when we turn inward, usually we do it in a fixated way. And we fixate on our mind as a self, which it is not. Taming the mind means taking responsibility as an individual, which is why we use the term individual liberation in the context of the Vinaya and so forth. Taking responsibility as an individual for what you do with your mind. And the funny thing about the mind is that if we don't watch our minds, there is no limit to the mischief the mind can get up to. Because the mind is perfectly empty. As perfect emptiness, it has no limitations. There is therefore no uh, way to fill the mind. It's infinite. Because there's no way to fill the mind, 
There are no limits on desire, anger, and stupidity. If we don't cultivate contentment, we will never be satisfied because the mind is never full. Likewise, if we don't cultivate a watchful awareness, mindful and vigilant awareness, the mind will never stop coming up with further delusion because there is nothing else that can stop it. So the only solution to this problem, which is the problem, is mindfulness and the vigilance or alertness that protects and maintains mindfulness. We have to constantly be asking ourselves, what is my mind doing right now? It was the practice of the great early masters of Lord Atisha's Kadampa tradition to keep on their table in front of their meditation seat uh, two containers of a white and black stones or pebbles and to observe their thoughts and every time they had a virtuous thought to put a white stone somewhere, some third container and every time they had a, a negative malicious thought or selfish thought to put a black stone up. And whenever someone started doing this, initially most of their thoughts were vicious. But over time, if they practiced it simply through the discipline of observation, the good thoughts would proliferate and the bad thoughts uh, would gradually uh, be reduced. The point is that we can gradually change but only if we try, only if we make the effort through uh, mindfulness. It's said that our minds are like wild horses, but they're wild horses that can be tamed. And the taming of the wild of your own mind is what is called individual liberation especially when you employ the even greater techniques of the development of bodhicitta and the even more extraordinary methods of the Vajrayana, such as viewing all appearances as deity or divine, all sound as mantra, and all thought as the display of awareness. It is possible to really, really tame your mind. So this song is about how to do that. And the first line, when your mind is caught by recollection, it is seen. Now the recollection, the mindful awareness, of course, is the mind itself. So it catches itself in the sense that it experiences itself in the present moment. And that is what is called seeing the mind or seeing the nature of the mind. However, thoughts will continue to arise. They're not going to stop because they're the natural display of the mind. And because you're meditating, it's quite possible that the thoughts that arise will be about meditation. And that can be a problem. Thoughts themselves are not a problem. But when you're meditating, if you start thinking about meditating, those thoughts become very seductive because they seem to provide the possibility of improving upon the original mind. So in the second line, it says, don't introduce the intellect's alterations. Leave it as it is. When you're meditating, your thoughts about meditation 
may lead you to try to alter or fix or meddle with the mind. The key point here is through mindfulness and alertness to give those thoughts no special status. Clever ideas about how to improve your meditation, the intellect's alterations, are uh, no better or worse than any other thought. And so you respond to them by looking directly at them, not by being captured by them. So in other words, you simply continue the practice of mindful awareness. Now, especially doubt and speculation can arise. Among thoughts about meditation, perhaps the most um, captivating for us is, is this it or not? So in the third line it says, if the doubt, is this it or not, arises, rest in that. Again, don't follow the thought of doubt, the thought of speculation, and produce yet another one. Simply look directly at that thought. So in other words, what's being said here is that thoughts about meditation have no special status. Deal with them with the same mindful awareness as any other thought. And even thoughts about is this it or not have no special status. Just deal with them the way you would deal with any other thought. Well then, what about resolution? Aren't we seeking some kind of decisive resolution, recognition of our mind's nature, and so on? Well, the problem is resolution is conceptual. It's a thought. It's not recognition. It's, the, um, it's after recognition, it's thinking about recognition. So in the fourth line it says, if the resolution it is arises, now I had rest in it, but Rinpoche uh, noticed a difference in the word, and so I'm, we're going to change it to relax in it. He said that it's like the analogy of uh, cutting the bond of a sheaf of wheat, or the way a Brahmin spinning thread has to uh, adjust the tension of the, is it a loom? Oh, I can't hear it, but anyway, whatever it is. Um, so they have to adjust the tension of the spindle or whatever it is so that the, the thread doesn't break. So the, the idea of relax here is also let go, but the Tibetan says on top of it, so I would say in it in the English. So it doesn't mean so much let go of it, but let go within it. So in other words, the resolution, if you have a resolution, uh, that this is it, that may be based on recognition. The problem is you don't want to turn against the recognition, but you don't want to go with the conceptualization of the thought, the resolution. So the key to that is, Rimshe says, just relaxing, letting go completely in that state. If, on the other hand, the dissatisfied thought, this isn't it, arises, let it go. Whatever happens, be content with naked ordinariness. Naked here means direct. It means that there's no veil or curtain or obscuration between the mindful mind and the mind that is the object of its own mindfulness. It's the same thing. Ordinariness means that there's no attempt to improve upon, fix, or alter what the mind is. You are concerned with what the mind does, but you're not trying to change what the mind is. And then the last line gives the important key, meditate on devotion for your guru and compassion for beings. If you want your meditation to develop, then you need to cultivate two things along with mindfulness. Devotion for your guru is the key to blessings and compassion uh, for beings. And then finally it ends, Dechen Bhava Dorje wrote this to remind Karma Jongjup. So presumably Karma Jongjup asked for a reminder of how to meditate and this is what was written for him. Emma Ho Nawa Sadon Lameko 
মুগু চেয়ে দাদা ঠাকুর লামে সু থে সবানো লামে তো ইচে থেপে সবানে เอ่อมาโหซาเซนานมอนซาร์เบเกซิงดาวนาวาซาเดซาร์นาวิกิโยซิโยบาซัมเจเตตาควาราซาร์เกยอรีซควาราเชยอกเนลูซาร์เกย
Tene lama ge tog se yeme ngone ta ne gre di yare ma to che ge pena ta mi se ge che goya nda bo ge tene jum he nda bo ka ya yo ma de ko ta cho cho ba na wo re di yare o te ta bo te ta ha ko ma to pa la tene ta ta cho so me ke se ge so ma de ma to che ge ngone ta ne nda bo ge na ta ta ko ra ge che ga ma ta pe ra ge che la tene che ngosu la ta kora la me ge to te ta ngone cho ge ye shi ngon de cho ge to re nga ra cho ge sem te ta nyom ma be de be ge te ni sem re de yo de ma zo thon de la kora ye nge ban da wo che ye be ge che na ta cho nge be so an de ye wa she be ten de te a la ma le ma ta to Somango, saying what she pretends, and that corner, take your laying dog and do some big, you want she pretends to run a step somewhere in a slam a tart a lot, take a corner lot to do, ne? Then a somango, take a rank, took up till a same get that top of Kadeshawa in a take a soma majo. Malay, but take a nana, a yat to bat the cartoon body, so I didn't do. Tato Zobjo Maji, but take a key lasten shoes. Tondo, reto, top of pounds, take tail and loss, chibagi, take tumde, chepard, papa, sabbat, and tongue and the bottom. Oh, ta, dead of tongue and topic, rewata. Ao tan son sa me do son be ge to pan da bo ka ya me ba che ne te tam je de pan go ge ri son du son du ten xing ge ma tong son du ten xing ge ma tong te ne son du tan ten xie pa yo ta de ba tan te ne ge ma tan wa la so ba ta te ta ba che go ge ri sin du je me ta xie no go mu sin de ta na me sin du je Tom Jella, Tom Zabba in Barang, Turkin, the Hako, the Hako, the thing that did that will laugh. Shambalo, but the gum go with it. Some that can get to us, ten, ten, mung, chawa, chaja, najo, mung, ten mung, chawa, and ten you mung, big chawa, carrying in a tear, Tom Jetty, Cora, now I in a yarrow. Najo di tene pangyo di shiraki karchen bori se rani tonje yi shete Toma me pe sotun jal se ta te ta pe goni ta jun chong wa yi na Soso rani pe yi shi ta ye doma ne rangi jyo la ne te pe ke Tenje tene yi shete ta dende chen tong song se ne kora Jojo Kaya, Mepig and Nani, take a Nello to Sergeant Dora Sosa, the Nello Gay, Rangyanda was the Sergeant and Yarung in Jagadis. Ted then in the man left with that, that Ted I was in Yatuba in a tatting on it and set up ten in the Maganani. Chose the Chubanda was the tat, Terry Dioris, Chunze, Connor, Hingdom means that Chu Yamsa Lenkin, Yonsa Zoba. Tamala, Tacong, the Hing Dummies, Chudy and Barbara Dodging is Church Chazo Dubbe Shadami Shadamis, that Chula Teboris, so we can Barbara Dodge Conge, then the Church had the Chamber, the Zoba Chamber, Nika, Dubbe Gita, Shadamam, Kadanda was the Tatins, Chudy and Paji Slalom Tees. あじさんの先生ってよ。いや、それ。ああ。で、ペマゼ、さもちょっと。で、ごめんね、ペント。で。で、なんだって。先ね、ペタブゴドン。チャクチャンゾチャンがるぽにかどげよろ。で、連帝
Well, we could, I mean, it, you could subdivide it any way you want, but basically there are two parts. The first part of it is a prayer, and the second part of it um, is instruction. But the prayer, of course, is also instruction. Now, the song begins with the Sanskrit words emaho, which are uh, an expression of wonderment, an expression of awe, an expression of uh, delight, and something, it's the expression of discovering something wonderful and amazing that you didn't know existed before. So here, emaho is, ref is applied to the discovery of the true nature of appearance, sound, and thought as the guru's body, speech, and mind. The first line starts with appearances. Appearances are lucidity, emptiness, the guru's body. Now, first of all, this is a statement. It's not saying we should think of appearances as though they are. The appearances actually are that. So what does this mean? Appearances are everything we see, more broadly speaking, everything that we experience. And their attribute that defines them as appearances is simply that we experience them. They appear. And therefore, we call that uh, lucidity or clarity that there is experience, there is content, and so on. Rimshay said that, but we make a mistake <laughs> about what lucidity is. We mistake lucidity, or just mere appearance, to be evidence of reality. The mistake we make is we think, if it appears to me, it must be real. And the funny thing about that mistake is it's completely wrong. If it appears to you, it must be unreal. Lucidity, appearance, is not, is not evidence <laughs> of reality. It's evidence of emptiness. So... Lucidity, emptiness, does not mean that things are both just, they're both lucid and empty. Their lucidity is their emptiness. We can define appearances as an emptiness that appears. Rimshe used the term non existent appearances and the term mere appearances. They merely appear. Now, why is lucidity evidence of their non-reality? Because experience, appearance is a type of experience, and experience is necessarily an interdependent function between the senses and, and what they perceive. Therefore, if anything's interdependent, it's empty. It's produced by causes and conditions. It can't be anything else. It is impossible for appearances to be real. Appearance is proof of emptiness. So that is the guru's body. The true nature of all appearances is the real body of the guru. Okay. So therefore, in the second line, you say, I pray to him with devotion. How do you feel about all appearances as the guru's body? Devotion, appreciation, gratitude for showing you the truth. Then, sounds are sound emptiness, the guru's speech. This is equally true of sound. We, we hear, well, I don't hear very much now because I've got a raging <laughs> ear infection, but, but we, some people hear. <laughs> I have heard. <laughs> That's what I heard. Um, we hear, and we mistake, we mistake that to mean, I hear it, it must be real. No, 
It's impossible. If you hear it, it can't be real. It has to be. The very fact, think about it, the very fact that you hear something means that it's interdependent. If it's interdependent, it's empty. It's not that in spite of being sound, it's emptiness. Sound is heard emptiness, just as appearances are seen emptiness. Couldn't be anything else. That is the guru's speech. Why is it the guru's speech? Because it's the truth. It reveals the true nature of sound. Just as the guru's body points out the true nature of appearances. They're not real, they're empty. So I pray to him with an outlook of purity. Now, in the Tibetan, there are actually two words for purity here. There's one that means kind of, it's the word you'd use about clean, pure water. So it has a notion of transparency, brightness, um, enthusiasm, wonder. And then the other word just means the perception of purity or sacred appearances and so on. So I pray to the guru's speech with an attitude of amazement, wonderment at the purity of sound emptiness, the revelation of what sound really is. Then thoughts are awareness uh, emptiness, the guru's mind. Thoughts are the display of the awareness that is your mind's nature. Your mind's nature is awareness. That's what makes a mind a mind. Other things may not be aware, but minds are aware. That's why we call them minds. And so minds think, or at least our minds think. And thoughts are the display, the content of that, of that mind's awareness. And we think, <laughs> if I think it, that thought must be real. The same mistake we make with appearances and sound. But no, it can't be. Thoughts can't be real. They couldn't occur. Anything that occurs, that happens, must be unreal. Or couldn't occur. So that is the guru's mind. The guru's mind is what shows you the true nature of thought. So I pray to him with trusting faith. Trusting here, I mean, it's, it, the, the word trusting that I use is a little weak. It means... Um, belief. And what do you believe in? You believe in the emptiness of thoughts. You believe that the display of awareness is, is empty. The last two lines of this first part of the prayer summarize the whole idea. The guru and my mind are indivisible. I pray to him with certainty of this. Arimshay said this word certainty here is very important. Normally, when we use the word certainty or decision, resolution, um, we think it's the resolution of something that is in doubt. You know, do I, I need to find out, is the guru, are the guru and my mind indivisible or not? I'm uncertain of this, as though it were uncertain. But there's no uncertainty of this. In that sense, Rumshe said, there's no need for a resolution or a decision on this point. It is not, it is not uh, up for debate. It is not something that we, uh, there is simply no question at all whether or not your mind and your guru are indivisible. And the proof, Rumshe said, that there is no question whatsoever about this is simply Buddha nature. Because you are a sentient being, by definition, you have a mind. Because you have a mind, the nature of that mind must be the Dharmakaya. There's no other type of mind. Because of that, then there can be no difference between your mind and the mind of your guru. One dharmakaya and another dharmakaya are, are not in any way different from one another. There's no other way it could be. So I pray to him with certainty of this really is an instruction saying we need to be certain of this. 
we need to resolve this point. So that part uh, on the nature of appearances, sound, and thought is um, written as a prayer. The next uh, four lines are written as a straight instruction on meditation. Distraction awakens awareness. This is one of the most important points we could ever learn about meditation and is taught both in the Common Path of the Sutras and here in Mahamudra and the Great Perfection Instruction. Especially for us as beginners, the, the easiest way for us to experience mindful awareness is when we return from a state <laughs> of distraction. Distraction, when you uh, notice that you're distracted, that is mindful awareness. And the thing about that mindful awareness is it's unplanned. So it's not cranked up. It's not f false. It's not forced. It's not, it doesn't involve alteration. You just notice the distraction. So therefore, in the next line, he writes, as soon as it's there, it is fresh. Fresh means it is, a, no, it is a state of mindfulness or awareness that is present in the present. It is not mindfulness or recollection of the past. It is mindfulness of the present. So as soon as you notice that you're distracted, that is the awareness that you're cultivating. Therefore, he says, don't alter or change it. There's nothing more than that that you're looking for. All you're looking for in meditation is that awareness that recognizes. So therefore, he says, <laughs> stop everything and relax on the spot. Stop everything or just, the Tibetan literature says, just cut it all out. You know, like we'd say, cut that out. <laughs> Stop all of your scheming and trying to look for something special, something greater, something brighter. Just stop all of that and relax on the spot. That's it. That's all you need. The next uh, stanza Let go of wanting to see hope and fear and thought. In other words, let go of uh, amb ambitious meditation, the idea of I want to see this, I want to discover this, I want something better. Hope and fear, again, is I hope it gets better and I fear it may not. And thought means here, thought about meditation, ideas, concepts. Recollect diligence and give generously. Always keep in mind the need for effort. Now this is, in a sense, it's, it has two meanings. One is that always recollect or be mindful of the need for diligence. But you can also think of it as be diligent in mindfulness. Give generously. If you want to, your meditation to grow, you need to be a generous and kind person. Composites are impermanent. Cultivate revulsion. Anything that is composite uh, is impermanent in two ways. It will eventually uh, come to an end uh, altogether. And at any given moment, um, it is changing. It is in flux. There is no such thing as stasis of a composite phenomenon. So therefore, cultivate revulsion means learn not to invest your, yourself in these things, because they're undependable. Befriend benevolence and compassion. The best friends you can ever have are your own love and compassion for others. Let go of ideas, plans, and talk. Let go of 
ambitious ideas about the future, things you, schemes and plans, and a lot of unnecessary blah, blah. The next stanza says, self-awareness is the ultimate wisdom. The ultimate wisdom that we seek is just this recognizing awareness, which recognizes and is aware of itself. Encounter it without seeing. There are two uh, meanings to this. Encounter it without seeing means that when, you, when it arises, it encounters itself. So therefore, it cannot see itself because you see something as an object. But also, Rinpoche said it means you, when you encounter it, when it arises, when you experience it, do so without the idea, I saw it, because that's the past. As soon as you have the idea of seeing, it is an idea about a past moment of experience, and that's distraction. This, that will ensure perennial well-being. This is advice for all Buddhists. Now, the last four lines, unfortunately in English, didn't come out as, it's sort of funny. Um, in the, the um, Tibetan, Baba Dorje is able to begin all four lines with the word Dharma. Um, so he says that, you know, it's, the first one, I, the blasé Buddhist, Barwe Dorje. Um, in the order of the Tibetan, uh, the, the word for uh, blasé Buddhist is chudre. So it begins with the word dharma, chu. And then about dharma, he's a blase, he accuses himself of being blasé or jaded. Do people say blasé in this country? OK. So he's, he calls himself a blasé or jaded Buddhist. And then the uh, second line also begins with Dharma. Have written these instructions that include the Dharmas of Mahamudra and the Great Perfection in Dharmic, in a place endowed with Dharma, Pajil Shlalom. Mata Nihi Yavar Changilo, Tata Lama Tamjila, so on the Tava Lama Nam, said the Tata Lama. You also about Tamjila, so on your tongue. That's so on them, that cutting what he go with your senna. Meta by Yimbati, Meta Sotula, Tayimbati, Nihi Jetaba. メタ ま、さ、ニシェじゃわい。で、ニシェで。で、ニシェで、かじで、で、ニシェやな。で、さ、ジョクよらわ。でら、さ、ジョクもんだ。さ、ニシェか。ちょっと。ああ、そうやね。ち
یعنی چه وقتی هم بر دیاتی که داشت کارشیم بودی نام داد توی اینجور تو میگند از دان نام داد توی سنت دا یارگون نه چی سیون دکافس دا ته تا بگ نام نام داد که توی اینجور وقتی میگند آبوده دیاری سرده میگو سنت دا تا که گونه کاریگی لب گونه میدونه لی Takpaci yang membersem lagi us, tapi tahu yang begitanya, mungkin tahu yang begitanya, takpaci yang membersem lagi us. Rani rasa sembilan bulan de, majin jombu dijit tanjung de us, tapi sosok rani begih, rasa tak sembilan bulan de, tapi tanjung kundi kerja pada barang jela jatuh degu yang mendo. Majin jombu Dijit tanjung dogus, dari jope pelab tamci kun rangsem nang dukola tanduji tak kondo semua dapat rangsem de kanan dukola jadi sekara rangsem mu sama de tak terjun dalam contoh bateri la tanduji sama dah, tanduk tanduk cenduk cenduk macam wal he so nyamnen dalla nintendo kare he gyonate he so nyamnen dalla nintendo jyote karchen bari is jale pembe donga na jume nene tebe palap kusereng shalto trashi tenyi londam do barbe dolje ranyul doka polo kipa am Kaju tu ming sendata, kama kaju tu jinsan. Jinsan itu. Tapi ujian yang so ni kama wajib so, perlap so kon ngor barbe doji tipakes. The song on page uh, 105 uh, is, um, begins as a prayer, but is principally uh, instruction. The first line is, I pray to my root gurus. The uh, Tibetan is specifically uh, pluralizes uh, the, the word lama or guru. So it indicates that the one's praying to all of one's root gurus. Now, Rinpoche's text has blessed me so that I recognize impermanence, but uh, Lama Tratop has another edition that says, bless me so that I gain certainty about impermanence. And the committee seems to feel that that, that is the more uh, correct uh, reading. Um, so it means, grant me your blessing so that I gain conviction, certain belief, uh, certainty uh, about the impermanence of all composites. Bless me so that I remember death in my heart. Then the instruction, do not take this ripened aggregate of form composed of the four elements to be permanent. The Our form aggregate, our body, one of the five uh, aggregates that make up what we call a person, is a ripened aggregate because it is the ripening of a previous karma. It is composed of the four elements, earth, water, fire, and air, and therefore is a composite because it's made up of bits and pieces. It's a composite. Because it is a composite, it is uh, impermanent. So the instruction is never to forget that uh, your body is impermanent. And then it continues, remember death. Remember that um, your mind and your body are going to one day be separated forever which is what we call death. And your body uh, will just uh, rot or be burnt or whatever. It's, your body becomes garbage at that moment. It's, it's garbage. 
the changing of the four seasons is like a mirage. Um, when we look at the, what's going on in a specific season, it, it seems to last for a while, but eventually it always leads to the next season. The leaves fall, the, the, the weather changes, and so on. It's like a mirage in the sense that when you're some distance from a mirage, it looks like there's a pool of water there, but as you get closer, the illusion uh, disappears. And the seasons are like that. If whatever is going on right now with the weather is simply proof that it's not going to last, something else is going to happen. So in short, whether it's about the body or the external environment, he continues, there is nothing permanent. Keep this in mind. There is nothing that we can think of that is uh, not a composite. Anything you can conceive of, if it's conceivable, it must be composite and therefore impermanent. Cultivate without distraction this self-aware, self-illuminating nature of mind. So what we cultivate in the practice of meditation is the nature of our mind. And it has uh, two attributes to which he refers. One is it is self-aware. Your mind uh, can be aware of itself. Secondly, it is self-illuminating. does not require something external to it to indicate it. It illuminates itself. And that simply needs to be cultivated without distraction. So again, through undistracted mindful awareness as described in the preceding song. You will greatly benefit now and later. This will help you tremendously in this life and obviously in future lives. All you disciples who live here, diligently turn your minds inward. Again, as presented in in an earlier song, don't be distracted by outward appearances. Turn your awareness in on itself. Don't walk, sit, plan, or do much. In other words, don't make yourself busy for no purpose. Emphasize the implementation of what you know. Rather than trying to receive ever more instruction, practice what you've already received. I have no other helpful advice to give. May all you beloved disciples live long. May you prosper and spontaneously accomplish dual good, the good of oneself and the good of others. This was offered by Barbara Dorje while visiting uh, my homeland. And then the colophon says, this was written by Barbara Dorje for all my disciples, such as Kaju Toku, which refers to uh, uh, Kaju Tashi, Ujin Jamso, and the Nyarpa or custodian uh, karma is a virtue. Same nam yur malam jamba nam dena kiv si ba jong wei chel jong do pong kam san a yi chung do yi chung do oh go na go na yi chung jie sal ga do ga do sa da ni ri do Flana, Flana, you know, Kaina. Gato Flana, ne Gar to go. Tambe, Tuki, Gang Cherry, Jedo, Ninja, Neton, Ni, Tuminto, Damba, Latter. Ah, the Gachin of Chicago. Okay. 
Jondu Pongom Sani Yin Jinzo, Lado Sieda Sanan, Lampir Jao, Tado, Tado. ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、ただ、
ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
mental formations and so forth, is really the Buddha Amoga Siddhi. And the aggregate of consciousness is really the Buddha Akshobhya. The element earth, anything solid, anything in a state of solidity, is really uh, the uh, female Buddha, Buddha Lochana. The element water, anything in a state of a liquid state, is the female Buddha Mamaki. The element fire, anything in the state of plasma, is really the female Buddha Pandaravasini. And the element wind, anything in a gaseous state, is really the female Buddha Samaya Tara. The element of space is really uh, the female Buddha Vajradhati Shvari. So it's not that we are trying to change things into that way. That is the way they really are. And we don't see things the way they are because we're deluded. So when he says, in order to purify the appearances of this life, he doesn't mean in order to change the external world. He means in order to correct our delusion. The first step is to know, to understand and believe and know that our aggregates and elements, the things we blame for everything that we don't like, I don't like my body, I don't like my thoughts, I don't like my this, I don't like my that, I don't, I don't like, you know, are not to blame. <laughs> they are perfect. <laughs> We're to blame for being deluded. So the first step is, since your aggregates and elements are always deities, know them to be deities. Then bring their clear appearance as such to the path. So the second step is to learn to view them that way by cultivating the habit, diligently cultivating the habit of seeing the aggregates and elements as they are as divine. Since we don't see them as they are right now, we need to imagine them as they are. It's like, for example, imagining stuff that's inside a room, that's really inside that room, but you can't see it yet because the door's closed or because it's too dark. But you can imagine that it's there, and that's what you do in the generation stage. So how do you do that? The second stanza begins, from the first moment of waking, from the moment when you wake up in the morning, or if you wake up during the night, whenever. Appearances are a pure realm. Your body, a deities. Your dwelling, a palace. Your companions, gods and goddesses. So if you're sleeping with you know, 12, 13 other people, they're all <laughs> gods and goddesses. <laughs> now, everybody, not just the people that you see when you first wake up. Speech, mantra in nature, and thought the display of fresh self-awareness. Vow never to stray from this. So practice starts when you first wake up. At the first moment that you wake up, you immediately start to view everything you see, all appearances, as divine. Your body a deity. So Rinpoche said that whatever deity you meditate on, if you're a Vajrayana practitioner, you do some form of deity meditation. So then you, you immediately you think that you're that deity. Your dwelling that deity's palace, and your companions, whichever gods and goddesses your particular deity frolics with. Speech mantra in nature. What does mantra mean here? Rinpoche said, in this context, mantra means empty sound that is inherently sacred or divine. We have two uh, mis well, two misconceptions about uh, sound and speech. We think that it's real, which was discussed in the previous, uh, in a previous song, and we think that it's mundane. The point here is the nature of speech, 
is actually mantra. The true nature of speech is that it is empty sound that is inherently sacred or divine. So to be mindful of that from the moment you wake up is important. So your speech mantra in nature and thought the display of fresh self-awareness. When push comes to shove, all your mind is, is self-awareness. That is what it really is. And even when it's diluted, it's actually in its nature fresh because it's, it's actually in the present. If it's diluted, it's trying to be in the past and trying to be in the future, but it can't be. <laughs> you can't be anywhere but now, anytime but now. Even Yogi Berra. <laughs> well, Mickey Mantle asked him what time it was, and he said, you mean now? Um, so thought is the display of your awareness. So therefore, it must be, whether it's recognized or not, and here the goal is to recognize it, the display of fresh self-awareness. Vow never to stray from this. The vow of the Vajrayana is never to stray from what's called threefold bearing. All appearances as the deity or divine. All sound as mantra and all thought as it says here, the display of fresh self-awareness. So that um, is primarily about the practice of the generation stage, which starts from when you wake up in the morning and ends whenever you lose consciousness. Now he turns to the completion stage. The nature of an undistracted mind is empty. A distracted mind is equally empty. Now, I, I wrote equally. Actually, the Tibetan says is even more empty. But it, is, it means equally. But he said even more because um, to, em to, to e emphasize the point through exaggeration. When you, when you look at your mind without distraction, you discover that it's empty. And that may lead you to think, but when it's distracted, is it empty or not? Oh, it's just the same. This mind itself, whether distracted or not, is lucidity emptiness. There are two states of mind. There's distraction, which, which is the conceptual mind. And there's a state of undistracted self-awareness, which is what we call pure mind. In either case, the mind in and of itself is lucidity emptiness. Know that it is so unceasingly. So recognize the, he the point here is the view, the recognition that whether you are distracted or not, the nature of your mind does not change. Now, there are some differences in Rinpoche's text and Lama Tratop's text with regard to this know that it is so unceasingly. A one text would read more like, know that it never changes from being so. Another one would read more like, literally, know that it never departs from being so. The meaning is the same. The words are slightly different. <laughs> So then, okay, now the, the next uh, stanza begins with, uh, it describes a post-meditation and then the completion stage to do with sleep. Food and drink are amrita. So view all, everything you eat and everything you drink as a pure or divine nectar or ambrosia. Actions are a magical dance. Actions, whatever you do, is the action of the deity. So therefore, it is magical in the sense of illusory, but pure, uh, sacred illusion. Everything is always a boundless expanse of purity. If you cultivate daytime appearances in this way, at night the conceptual and non-conceptual clear lights of light and deep sleep and thoughts in dreams will like, that's a very long sentence. 
At night, the conceptual and non-conceptual clear lights of light and deep sleep and thoughts in dreams will, like the daytime, be liberated upon arising, recognized, will vanish into the expanse. That's a long sentence. OK. If you cultivate daytime appearances in this way, if you maintain this type of sacred outlook, the, the, what's called threefold bearing, throughout the day, from the moment you wake up until the moment you go to sleep, the habit of that will affect what happens to your mind when you sleep. If you don't fix your, your mind, if you don't work on being less diluted during the day, you're not going to be any less diluted during the night. So you start with the daytime state, which is a state over which we have somewhat more control. At night, the conceptual and non-conceptual clear lights of light and deep sleep. There are, um, these are s states where there are no dreams, but you're either in a light uh, state of sleep or deeply asleep. And um, the experience described here is where you are physically asleep, but conscious. And when you are physically asleep and not dreaming, but your awareness is present, you're not unconscious, that's called the clear light of, of light or deep sleep. In other words, if you cultivate awareness during the day well enough, you will, you will start to become aware when you're asleep. And thoughts in dreams. Uh, dreams are thoughts. Um, for example, when you're, if you experience the hypnagogic state in between being awake and asleep, you may notice that you're thinking about something and then at a certain point it starts to become images and you're actually seeing it. I think people experience this. So if you train the way you think about the world in this way during the daytime, it will affect how you think about the world in your dreams. And depending upon your diligence, one of three things will happen to your dreams. They may be liberated upon arising, recognized, or vanish into the expanse. In the case of a person of the greatest diligence in daytime awareness, then uh, as soon as they experience a dream, then it is the uh, delusion of the dream state. Not only do they know they're dreaming, but the delusion of the dream state itself vanishes. In the case of somebody who is less uh, diligent, then they will simply uh, always be lucid in dreaming. They'll experience conscious, uh, constant lucid dreaming, which it means recognized. Vanish into the expanse is when eventually someone gets to the point where they stop having dreams altogether because they, they uh, are in a state where the, um, it's said that the clear light experience pervades all sleep, so that as the person goes to sleep, whether they're in light sleep, deep sleep, uh, the rapid eye movement phase, which is usually the dream state, it's all just the clear light. They're just in, in a state of non-conceptual uh, awareness. That's, it's, that's what they say. A yogi who cultivates this will be happy. Well, hello. <laughs> I mean, yeah. OK. Then Tertian Bhagavad Georgi says, this is a description of qualities I lack. However, I was unable to refuse the request of a great lama. Therefore, amidst bouts of restless, endless sleep. Now, here he's saying this because he doesn't want, of course, he had realized all of this, but he wants to pretend that he hadn't. So he makes it sound as though his sleep is a, that he, he spends too much time trying to sleep because he's so lazy, and therefore he's, he doesn't sleep well because he's, because he's trying to sleep more than he needs to. So he's constantly turning back and forth. And he, he, he puts this in this song simply so that he, 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 he wants us to think that he hasn't realized the clear light of deep sleep, which obviously he has, so we don't believe it, but that's what he says. And then in case we're thinking because he says that food and drink are amrita, that he's experienced boundless purity, 
of, and, of eating and drinking, then he puts down his relationship with food. And he says, and overeating to the point where my kidneys were squished. <laughs> <laughs> This cleric with a bad mouth and ears wrote this quickly, smiling to myself. Through its virtue, may the meditation of this great Lama progress. May he lead all connected him to him to the realm of liberation. Ananje Balan Rova, Sipen Zolen Rova, Rova, Yoy, Gewan, the Jeo Gonzona, Yee, Zozo, Yee, Lezon, Tamba, Gunye, Dova, Yozanjo, Zener, Rambodje, Maje, Bana. Jeeva nyamba meba Kone gonda bewa Yo zimje damje de dande jarje ngiro damje Tada dombar yo zanjo zamba ganda zaryo De da ganje molan rova yo zanje Yeah, 